Humanity's hunger for precious resources is ever increasing. We need them more and more as the population grows and technology advances. However, mining activities have always been a major problem. The mining industry is one of the most impactful from an environmental standpoint, but also politically, often leading to wars and instability over resource control. For this reason, a proposal often discussed is to move these mining activities to space, known as asteroid mining, or the extraction of precious resources from asteroids. This may seem like science fiction, but it appears to be becoming a feasible option in the near future. But does it really make sense, and how could we do it? What are the major challenges? Let's discuss in this video. In 1989, a science fiction novel titled, The Conquest of Mars, by Edison Dell, the American astronomer Garrett Service, was released. This story, which is ideally a sequel to Wells' War of the Worlds, features a war between Earthlings and Martians. The War of the Worlds ends with the Martians dying from a bacterial infection, lacking defenses against our world's bacteria. And from these premises in Service's novel, humanity decides to head to Mars to counterattack, to make the first move. However, on the way to Mars, this fleet of spaceships headed to Mars encounters a very interesting detail. An asteroid completely made of gold that the Martians had exploited for resource extraction through asteroid mining. This story is credited with the first narrative use of the concept of asteroid mining. However, this concept is much older because it was already discussed by Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, the Russian aerospace pioneer, in 1903. Later, however, someone really thought about designing, at least missions that truly do asteroid mining. Before continuing, please, like, this video and subscribe to the channel to support us. In 2012, the private company Planetary Resources set itself the goal of starting a mining extraction process on asteroids. In 2018 it closed down. In 2013, Deep Space Industries aimed to begin mining an asteroid in 2023, which evidently has not happened. In 2019, this company was purchased by Bread for Space, and no mined asteroids have been seen yet. The point is that extracting anything, but especially minerals and resources from asteroids, is very, very complicated. But why do we want to do it? Technologies, whether they are building materials, weapons, or the most sophisticated electronics, necessarily require raw materials that must be actually extracted somewhere. Precious metals are not found everywhere, but are located in some places on the Earth's surface where, due to tectonic or volcanic processes, they have surfaced or they are found below these, and therefore we have to dig mines, a real effort both from an energy perspective and from the environmental impact this type of industry has. Extracting precious minerals is an activity of particular economic interest ever since we started building any kind of technology. Entire economies have been and still are based on mining extractions. Some developing economies have developed precisely thanks to this industry. The world is increasingly hungry for this type of minerals. The UN reports that during the 20th century, the industry of extracting building materials increased by a factor of 34, while that of precious minerals less, but still a lot, a factor of 27. And this is especially because the population has increased tremendously, but also because the technologies that need these precious minerals have increased. One example above all, think of the lithium contained within the batteries of smartphones or electric cars. However, as mentioned, the mining industry is very impactful from many different points of view. First of all, the process of processing and extracting minerals is really energy intensive. A 2017 report states that about 6.2% of all energy produced globally is dedicated precisely to the mining industry. Moreover, the mining industry has many other negative secondary effects on the environment. Soil consumption, loss of biodiversity, contamination of water and soil. There are also geopolitical problems. Many instabilities, many wars, local conflicts are linked precisely to the appropriation of precious resources of this type. As if that were not enough, some of these resources are running out and it is thought that they may be completely exhausted globally in the coming decades. Obviously, this is a very generic discussion because there are different ways, more or less ethical, more or less impactful at an environmental level to extract minerals. Each mineral also has its own story, a different impact on the environment and on people. However, in short, it is natural that we look for other viable ways to find these resources. 
but can minerals really be extracted from asteroids? How, and above all, are there really so many precious minerals on asteroids as in Service's novel? Asteroids are rocks orbiting the Sun, just as planets are, but the different size has major consequences on the distribution of minerals within them. Planets, like the larger asteroids, are indeed differentiated bodies. This means that when the planets were forming, the heavier, denser elements settled towards the center, near the core, while the lighter ones migrated towards the surface. This is why the core of planets is often rich in iron, nickel, and other metals, whereas the outermost part is usually abundant in silicates. Those rock-forming minerals based on silicon, which make up most of Earth's surface. In contrast, smaller asteroids have not undergone such differentiation due to insufficient gravitational forces to form a spherical shape that leads to such stratification of minerals. Thus, in these smaller asteroids, minerals are often scattered haphazardly across the surface, without any clear hierarchy based on density. This means that if we choose the right asteroid, we might find veins of valuable minerals right on the surface, reducing the need for extensive mining operations. There are various resources that could be useful on asteroids. Among the volatiles, there are water, nitrogen, and oxygen, which could, for example, be used for a future space base. However, the resources that are most coveted are the metals. Iron, nickel, gold, platinum, iridium, gallium, copper, and many others could potentially be found in abundance on asteroids. Many minerals that are rare and valuable on Earth, because they are located in the inner parts of the planet, are relatively common among asteroids, such as those from the platinum group, which includes platinum, ruthenium, rhodium, palladium, osmium, and iridium. These elements can be present in asteroids in concentrations up to 100 grams per ton of rock, which is a very high percentage compared to some earth mines where concentrations might range between 5 and 10 grams per ton. However, these are a finite resource because once a mine on Earth is depleted, there are no more minerals to be found there. Whereas with asteroids, once the minerals on one are exhausted, we can move on to the next. Not all asteroids, however, are equally accessible from Earth because some are closer while others are farther away. Most asteroids are located in the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. There are over one and a half million of them, and their composition varies according to their distance from the Sun a consequence of the solar system's formation process. Those formed in the outer part of the solar system, in the main asteroid belt, are richest in volatiles because they were further from the sun and thus could more easily form volatile substances, such as hydrogen and oxygen-based ones, like water. These make up about 75% of the total. These asteroids which are part of the so-called C group. Then, moving to the middle part of the main asteroid belt, there are those richer in metals, about 8% of the total, while the remaining portion are those richer in silicate rock, which are in the innermost main belt, thus closer to us. This does not mean that if we take a metallic asteroid, it is made only of metal, but it does mean that these asteroids are very rich in metals. However, the point is that all these asteroids are in the main belt. We have to reach there in the main belt, and this has a significant energy cost. If we have to imagine a mining industry even in the main belt, so far from Earth, the cost of operations there would be so high that the profit might not necessarily outweigh it. Fortunately, or unfortunately, gravitational interactions between Jupiter and the main belt have caused many asteroids to be positioned near Earth. These are called near-Earth asteroids, NICE, which, at certain times in their orbits, can actually cross Earth's orbit. Some of these are considered potentially hazardous. About 2,000 out of the approximately 30,000 NIS that we know of. But the point is that these NIS are generally much more accessible than those in the main belt. NIS, however, do not have the same proportions of asteroid types as the main belt. So in reality, most of the NIS that come from the inner belt are rocky. About 64% come from the inner belt and are rocky, about 24% from the middle belt which are metallic, and about 8% are carbonaceous. The first step in asteroid mining is definitely choosing the right asteroid, as mentioned, and therefore we surely choose a NEA that contains the precious mineral we are interested in, but also among those that contain this mineral, those that are more accessible and therefore less costly to reach. To determine which asteroids contain the mineral we are interested in, we can use various techniques, which are also those we use to study asteroids and their composition. 
Once the asteroid is chosen, from a practical standpoint, how can we do asteroid mining? Once through these techniques we have selected our asteroid that contains the minerals we need. The first thing to do is imagine a spacecraft, a machine specifically for extraction, that anchors to the surface because asteroids have very low gravity. Thus, if we do not anchor to the surface, at the first release of energy for any type of extraction activity, our machinery would separate from the asteroid. Anchoring is not necessarily simple, especially considering that some asteroids are so-called rubble piles, like many we have observed, such as Bennu, Ryugu, Itokawa, and many others. These are piles of rocks held together only slightly by gravity, meaning they have a very incohesive mass. So anchoring isn't as straightforward because there may not be a solid rocky surface to attach to and remain connected to the asteroid. The anchoring system can be chosen based on the asteroid's type because a rocky surface, for example, allows for, say, screwing in. A metallic surface allows for the use of magnetic energy through magnets. Or a less cohesive surface may necessarily require something like a cable to attach the machinery to the asteroid surface. Therefore, different techniques can have different prospects depending on what type of asteroid we aim to extract resources from. Once extraction has begun, the situation becomes complicated again as a result of the fact that asteroids have very low gravity. If we hammer an asteroid, the fragmented rock pieces will shoot off and escape the surface of the asteroid easily, exceeding the escape velocity of the asteroid and thus entering orbit around the Sun. Here, a distinction must be made. If we need to collect loose material, such as the regolith found on the moon or the surface of many asteroids, or if we need to dig. In the first case, some collection mechanism, something akin to a scoop or scraper to gather the material and place it into a container then to be sent back to Earth, will suffice. In the second case, if we have a solid surface to dig into, the situation becomes more complex because we need a tool that allows us to drill the asteroid surface without dispersing all the material into space. Hence there must be a collection mechanism that ensures that material blasted away from the asteroid surface is captured by this machinery rather than escaping. If we could, ideally, dig into the asteroid, enter the subsurface, then here it becomes simpler to contain the material and prevent it from floating away and it might be more desirable to imagine an extraction that takes place below the surface of the asteroid. However, obviously, reaching beneath the surface has an energy cost and is not necessarily the simplest thing. So, it must be a bit of a compromise between what we need and what has a higher cost. Considering that the material we will gather will not be that precious mineral in its pure form but will be a rock containing that precious mineral. We can choose whether to process this rock to extract the precious mineral there on site or to bring it back to Earth and then process it here. Obviously, the first option is preferable because it means that we only bring back the precious mineral to Earth, thus we can bring back a larger quantity. In the other case, however, there's the simplicity of not having to also work in space, which obviously adds further difficulties to the operation. There are many possibilities. Perhaps the nicest one involves capturing an asteroid to bring it close to Earth, which could mean in orbit around the Moon, for example, or in low Earth orbit or perhaps attaching it to the space station to take advantage of evidently more advantageous situations to then proceed with extractions. This solution was proposed by a feasibility study in 2012 by the Keck Institute for Space Studies. The idea proposed was a mission that within 10 years could reach a small asteroid up to 7 meters in diameter, capture it, slow its rotation, and transport it into orbit around the Moon within a maximum of 10 years. The transport could be done using solar electric propulsion. From lunar orbit, it would be easier to work, especially if we imagine a future with a more stable and solid human presence on the Moon, as we plan to do with the Artemis program. But the estimated cost of this operation is very high, about $2.6 billion. This is a lot and can only be justified if the economic return is sufficiently higher than this amount. Indeed, Planetary Resources, the company mentioned earlier that failed in 2018, estimated that the return from an asteroid rich in platinum and having a diameter of even just 30 meters would be much, much higher, quantifiable in 40 or 50 billion dollars. So clearly, we would have a very high profit, about 20 times more than what was spent. Now, even if this was just an estimate thrown out by the company that obviously needed to sell its product and its idea of the future, 
we can reasonably imagine that an asteroid rich in platinum group elements would be much more valuable economically than the cost of launching the mission. Thus, it's not entirely unthinkable to carry out this endeavor from an economic perspective. From a technological standpoint, however, it's a different story because all this wonderful thing I've described somehow needs to be done, and it's not at all a given. Certainly, for now, we still do not have the necessary technologies to do it. The certainty is that, if we ever manage to actually do it in the coming decades, there could be a lot to gain, both economically and more importantly, from an environmental and international relations standpoint here on Earth. Thank you for watching. We invite you again to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell to not miss upcoming content.